Welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to keep going with the VR4. So uh, today I've set the camera up a bit later than I normally would. Normally I try and set it up first thing before we get going with it. However, wanted to get all the front brake plumbing all sorted out and done that we started last week. We lost um, another few days with Easter. So uh, that's all now completed and it's really down to bleeding the brakes now and that is that part of it sorted out. Now the first thing we're going to do is start with the coil on plug conversion. Now I have said in a previous episode that I wasn't that impressed with this wiring setup, uh, particularly because uh, as you can see, it's covered in like mud and it's had water in there. Uh, it's not ideal, particularly for an ignition setup. Anything that can get water in it with electrics is never a great thing. And uh, this is something that we need to sort out. Now this is a, basically a, a factory sort of setup here where they use uh, two igniters uh, that fire the, uh, the coil packs. And that these are a wasted spark uh, type uh, coil pack by the looks of them there. We're going to do away with all this. We need to label up some of these wires here because we are going to have to <clears throat> work it out when we get inside uh, and change the plugs, put a coil on plug setup on here and that will uh, alleviate some of these dramas. Also some other things here. There's a lot of earths um, that are all over the place for various bits and pieces. We're going to try and tidy that up. One of the um, the big issues with engine management is that uh, earthing needs to be done properly and it needs to be uh, basically common. So um, when the ECU gets a reference um, signal from, from all the different sensors, it needs to have a common earth because sometimes the difference between, say, this earth here and this earth here, if they're not both the same or they're not good earths, uh, could be that the, uh, the ECU gets wrong uh, readings, which can uh, cause problems. This is another thing as well. Uh, with uh, any sort of wiring, you should keep your wiring as short as possible. Now, um, adding these uh, coils in here um, it looks pretty. Uh, however, uh, that's just adding resistance uh, to the line. Electricity through wire is kind of like water through a pipe. So the smoother the path you give it and the shorter the path you give it, uh, the more pressure you give it. So uh, the same with this, we wanna make the flow as easy as possible. Also, these are all uh, crimp terminal connections here. Um, some of these, uh, that one looks like it's been sold, the rest are all still crimped. Um, it, it, it's not ideal to use crimp terminals either, or if you do use a crimp terminal, uh, you should solder them for this sort of application. So uh, we're gonna do away with all this anyway, um, and it'll be a different plug, but uh, yeah. This is the kind of thing that can put you out of a rally or create a misfire or whatever that you can spend hours chasing up. So working through this, <clears throat> we're going to label these wires as we go along. And the reason being is even though we're not reusing all of these, it just helps us to chase out which ones do what when we've got to track it back to the ECU. Because there's likely to be some pretty funky wiring going on in here. <clears throat> what are we going to find under this tape? Okay, well, a solder joint, two white wires, which would be to the positive feeds on the coils by the looks of it, is joined to a brown wire and soldered up. Okay, let's see where this rabbit hole leads us. What is that? What's going on there? That is... Okay, that looks like trailer wire. It is trailer wire. White, brown, red, blue, yellow. Yep, it is. That's a... They've used trailer wire there for some reason. That's interesting. So that, that, all that, that, and that is all out of the car. Right, so we've seen what we're taking out of the car. So now let's have a look at what we're actually gonna start putting into it. So unboxing video, let's get and have a look. Okay, 
start with this is for the coil on plug conversion a nice cnc machine aluminium adapter for the coils to bolt into uh, hatashi coils these are the same ones used in uh, this in the skylines i believe um, r33 skyline i think um, very good coils uh, these also have their own built-in igniters so um, they're very good reliable coils won't need separate igniters uh, adapter loom for that as well to be able to plug it in so that's all very nice cool uh, the nose or socks to allow them to reach down to the the length of the vr4 uh, coils and um, we can fix those in as well which is great and uh, what else is in the box uh, prp sticker happy days i don't know whether we'll carry that or not and there was also a couple of lollipops in here we've already eaten those we opened the box earlier sorry about that all right let's see what else we've got to replace the wolf 3d and the aging wiring we're going to go with uh, one of these it's a link g4x uh, monsoon so this is uh, one of the most basic of the uh, ecus um, they have a lot more complicated this is a wire inversion because they don't do a plug and play for the vr4 particularly considering that that wiring loom's all been chopped and changed anyway so pretty uh, straightforward stuff we could have used a Haltech however uh, the link ECU is uh, more than capable of that so nice little uh, unit there much lighter and smaller than the equivalent wolf comes with um, all the bits and pieces little mounting bracket in there and tuning cables etc so we'll work out how to mount all that we may reuse the mounting plate we may mount it in a different position we'll work that out also uh, link uh, boost control solenoid in there as well uh, at the moment uh, it was running uh, it, the car was running like a, a boost T or a bleed valve and it wasn't really plumbed in the best so we'll do away with all that and we'll allow the ECU to control the boost which will make it uh, much easier from a tuning perspective um, already has an external uh, inlet air temperature sensor on it so we don't need to put an external one of those in it's in there and also uh, while we're at it a nice link uh, wiring loom as well so we're going to replace all that wiring uh, under the bonnet with uh, some decent wiring which will allow some shielding and all the rest of it and then once we've run that through and into the engine bay it'll be purely a, uh, a matter of just uh, putting some convoluted tube over it once we terminate all the wires and I think we're also going to have to get some uh, new plugs for it where we can as well just to make it all a bit tidier this should uh, make it a lot more reliable now uh, there's still a fair bit of wiring um, under the dash and uh, around the engine bay that needs to be tidied up before we can start putting all this in so we'll get on to that next I've said this before in videos and I'm sure I'll say it again. Electrical wiring is one of the things that we find that most commonly in rally cars uh, mistakes are made. And uh, this one's uh, no exception. There's a few bits and pieces here that uh, we need to tidy up, in fact, a lot. It happens quite commonly in uh, particularly older rally cars. Sometimes there's an electrical fault that develops in the car and can't sort of isolate where the fault is. So put a new wire or a new piece of wiring in to cover that or say um, a new system's added or something is added extra and it's uh, easier or, or time consuming to pull the old stuff out so just put the new stuff over the top. Usually find that it happens quite a lot uh, where there's uh, interior of the car, spotlights and bits and pieces like that. It's not uh, often with uh, the car's main electrical system however the uh, VR4 being uh, pretty old now, it's um, it's had lots and lots of additions and changes and alterations to the wiring over time. So let's take stock of where we are with this thing at the moment because we've done a fair bit and discovered a fair bit in here. So obviously the wiring wasn't what we thought it was going to be. We knew we needed a little bit of rewiring. However, it basically needs a major rewire now as far as we're concerned. So we've pulled out all of the old engine management wiring and a great deal of the other bits and pieces in there as well. And even then there's still a fair bit of untidy wiring that's got to be tidied up and rewired. Regardless, uh, originally we were going to use the factory fuse box and uh, relay boxes to uh, run the, the circuits, but basically put it back to run the standard stuff. However, uh, that plan has sort of gone out of the window. There's a few questionable bits and pieces underneath some of the relay boxes and, and uh, also some of those um, systems seem to have been removed. So the factory stuff will eventually drive only things like wipers, horn, uh, headlights, etc and basically everything else will be rewired. So we're going to put in a separate relay and fuse box which is going to be used to drive all of the engine management and critical circuits like the fuel pump, 
uh, fans, etc. And then uh, the spotlights will rewire those as well to um, other circuits. So effectively, the car needs a complete rewire to, uh, to sort of get this stuff in, in the right direction. I think as it was, it uh, probably wasn't the most reliable. And uh, if it hadn't in the past, it was certainly going to cause reliability issues in the future. We need to get this all right so that uh, we're not chasing a niggling electrical fault on a rally, which could potentially put us out or um, cause a drama. Okay, so spent another couple of hours uh, tidying up more wiring here and doing a fair bit of work around the scenes. Uh, unfortunately, still taking out more than we're putting in, but we are starting to get it together. We'll look at that in a sec. A couple of other things we've discuss, uh, discovered down here, which are pretty interesting. Uh, this is a, a thermo fan wiring here. Um, it had uh, this size uh, wiring on it, which is probably about the correct size, probably 20 amp wire or thereabouts. Uh, and that was connected to a um, what looked like a 10 amp wire uh, somewhere in here that went back to the relay block. So anyway, we'll sort that out. Uh, also, uh, this is a, a power block of some description that was put in. Uh, basically, the battery, it's been relocated to the boot and in doing so, uh, needed a way of joining the power cables together. Um, traditionally speaking, we'd normally run them to the starter motor directly. However, the starter is not the easiest place to get at. So uh, in this case, we've reused it. I had to clean this block up slightly, um, change a couple of the threads in there correctly and re-terminate the battery cable. Uh, the, where the battery cable is in the rear of the car now. Uh, it was run through and the cable was probably uh, half a metre. Maybe, maybe a bit more uh, too long. So we've cut that back and, and re-terminated that now and um, terminated that all nice and neatly. Sorted out a few other bits and pieces. Um, still not a fan of this. Uh, as you can see here, that fuse is uh, pretty black and nasty looking. Um, it, it would have been originally connected to the positive battery clamp. So we're going to have to sort this out, uh, replace that fuse at the very least, and uh, possibly look at a, a more... Uh, water resistant solution than that it's not ideal really so we'll, we'll work that out we also need to put a new cover over the top of this whole thing this positive here um, could become a short circuit so a fire risk issue so we're going to sort that out uh, it did have a bit of mud flap material uh, cable tied over the top of it which was functional um, however yeah not ideal we'll fix that a um, few other bits and pieces we've done uh, this wire here went to the starter motor. This wire um, had a, a couple of joins in it, which was not ideal at all. Um, so we've deleted that whole wire, run a new section of wire through to the starter motor, terminate that with a new terminal and joined it, soldered it and joined it here. So that's joined back into the factory loom for the starter motor. So hopefully that should be more reliable. Also added a few convoluted tubes to the uh, battery cables and tied them back neatly out of the way uh, and got that under control. Also, Sorted out this uh, vacuum hose here. This is the one to the brake booster. Uh, it was a bit too long before. It was rubbing on the firewall up here. So we shortened that down, give us a bit more access. Obviously, uh, in a previous video, we've already done the uh, braided lines for the fuel and the brake. I think we're getting close to being able to start putting more bits and pieces back together on here now. So um, we'll chuck some plugs in it and start the coil on plug conversion then we can start laying out where we're going to run the wiring loom and terminate everything uh, these wires here they're just coiled up they are for the fuel injectors they were the ones that were run to the old wolf system so we've got a few bits and pieces to sort out there uh, also this is the uh, washer bottle wiring loom um, it's, it's a bit of a uh, not the best setup there where it's just plugged into the um, to some random wires that are actually run to the back of the car to where the washer bottle is. So we'll sort that out in there. Uh, and also a few bits and pieces down here. This is uh, oil pressure uh, gauge or oil pressure warning light wires. So that'll all get tidied up as we get through it. Interesting, that spark plug is very wet. There's a lot of water's been down there cylinders as well there they're well corroded those plugs and they're very black what's that one look like very black it smells like fuel like it's been over fueling on one cylinder for some reason let's put our prp uh, coil and plug kit in. 
Okay, uh, to start with, um, I've already done a few bits and pieces here. There's a little bit of uh, research and a and, um, few little things to, to be aware of in the background. So they come with O-ring seals. Um, I've already put the fitted the O-rings here, all four of them in pretty easy. Uh, on the VR4 head, uh, there's two bolts in the rocker cover that need to be removed um, for the uh, bracket to fit. Lovely CNC machined aluminium uh, bracket uh, anodized. You can get these in a few different colors. Uh, we chose the black one uh, and they simply sit over the ports in the 4G63 head like so. Okay, in the kit you get uh, four ignition coils. These are Hitachi coils, they're brand new. Uh, however, they are designed predominantly for the RB engine. They're a Skyline type coil. They are a very good coil, they're very reliable. Uh, however, this uh, nose section here doesn't fit onto the uh, or inside the VR4 head and pick up the spark plug properly. So you need to change them. So in the kit, you get these uh, universal silicon extenders. Now, the idea with these is they need to be cut down to the correct length. If you just try and put them in as they are, they protrude out about 60 millimeters out of the head so they don't fit. So they need to be uh, trimmed down slightly to get the correct length. And also inside there, I don't know whether the camera will pick that up. There is a spring inside there and the spring also needs to be trimmed down to the correct length. Now I've already measured these out. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, cutting them down, cutting the spring down. It's very straightforward. There's nothing major with that. Just give it a quick clip um, to the right length and measure it all up and slide it all on. And that's what they look like all installed. Comes up pretty flash. Just got one minor query you've got to check with PRP on regarding the uh, number four coil here because it doesn't quite uh, sit in the, uh, the head recess properly. So we're not sure whether we need to trim the edge of the coil off and not use a retaining bolt on it, or there's some way else of um, holding it in. It appears this one is just held in with the, um, the friction of sitting on the plate and pushed down onto the spark plug, which really is no different to the way the uh, coil wires sit on there anyway, normally. So the other three uh, retained uh, comes with a neat harness and we will terminate that and put a plug on that when we go to do the ECU wiring. As with a lot of things on this car, fitting the ECU wasn't the easiest job. The co-driver's footrest wasn't really bolted in uh, at all. So we had to sort all that out before we could get the ECU in properly. On to wiring in the ECU finally. And this might look like a right mess. However, there is a plan, a method to the madness, so to speak. You need to have a wiring plan and work out what you're gonna wire up and where before you even think about putting any wires in place. That way, when you go to lay it all out, it's much easier. We removed the right side intercooler pipes and found a few more dramas to deal with. Hmm. It may not look like much has progressed in the engine bay, however, a great deal has happened. All the uh, wires, we're beginning to terminate them all up now for the different sensors and bits and pieces. The uh, coil Plug wiring is all done, uh, just waiting on new plugs to come for the fuel injectors. Uh, got the throttle position sensor sorted. Uh, we've also got to do some work on the intercooler piping. Uh, as you saw, we got a bit of drama there to sort out. Uh, boost controllers sorted out now and a few other bits and pieces. Originally, I intended to do all the wiring in one video. However, we're still waiting on a few bits and pieces and finding a few other dramas. So we're going to have to make this into two parts. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far of the wiring on the VR4. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.